So now our gorillas are kind of settling in and look at them walking around in this little tropical paradise we made for them. Um, now they're kind of settled in, I think it's probably time that we go back over to the Asia side of our zoo and uh, continue with another animal. And the animal for today, as you've seen in the thumbnail, <laughs> is the Bengal tiger. And when we look at them on the Zoopedia, we can see they're endangered. So they meet the criteria for this zoo. And they actually have really large um, habitat, like really large patrolling areas. I was just looking at the uh, at the species data and the males have territory of 100 kilometers squared and females 20 kilometers squared. So it's actually like, I'm not actually sure we're gonna be able to provide that, but there is quite a large area here um, that at least, oh no, someone's died. <gasps> oh my goodness. Pippi Longstocking's died, or well, she's going to. I think that's a sickly cough. No! Oh, let's call the vet. Oh, Pippi Longstocking. Oh. Oh, she's still twitching a bit. Oh, there she goes. Don't look, Howard! Don't look! Oh, Howard's still doing good, though. He scared the little baby lech... Uh, not lech... We... Uh, what are these? Scimitar horned oryx? I completely forgot what they were called. Oh, well, the vet will come for her very soon. Bless. Poor Howard. He's still got his, uh, his girl in here, though, hasn't he? Oh, no. Oh, yes, yes, he does. Beanstalk. She was hiding. I thought that was Pippi Longstocking for a second. No, okay. He's still got Beanstalk and they've got their baby. Bless. Well, as I was saying, um, over on this side of the zoo, there's a really good space here where I think we're gonna put the Bengal tigers for today. Um, it's not quite the size of the territory that they need, but it is gonna be quite large. So hopefully that'll go, you know, some ways. Um, and it is only a conservation uh, program. So I guess the hope is that they wouldn't be there for that long. It's just to, to breed and then we'd release them into the wild. Now, the other thing we completely missed is we need to have some water treatment for our gharial habitat because this water is not clean. So we need to put in a water treatment facility. And I think I'm going to whack one in right here. Okay, so now they've got water treatment. The water should be clean. There you go. It's getting... Oh no, it needs power. So we need to put in a solar panel here as well. Um, I'm going to whack this here and then just move this tree over very slightly so it's a little bit more realistic. <laughs> so if we come and look back at our oryx, you can see they've been breeding like crazy. And what a cool feature that they've just added as well with a new update is you can see when... Oh, I'm going to pause because we've got protesters. Um, is You can see when the animals are outside of the gender ratio. So they're outsiders because um, there's too many males in this habitat. So I'm just going to go through. You can see there's two three males we have here and then yeah whereas th there should be only one male so this male has been accepted into the group i wonder who's related to who though so let's have a look they're all siblings i think they may all be related now or maybe the one that's not is the the one that has been accepted by the group which would make a lot of sense right yes they've only got one their mother is there, um, but we could release her and that would be it. So I think what we're going to do is release all the other males and then release the mother, which is this female here. Um, so select these males and release them all into the wild. That's 100 credits. is pretty good. And now we should just have the... Uh, oh, there's more down here. Unless that was the mother. I can't remember. I don't think so, though. I think she's a bit younger. I'm pretty sure we got his mum now. Let's have a look. Uh, Sludbook parents. Yes, she's been released. And he's got one younger brother, but that's fine. So he is our new male in here. And this habitat has been resolved. It's actually really helpful to see. because, And it's cool that they've added these group dynamics. So the animals are going to be kind of outsiders in the group now if you've got the wrong ratios. Um, I'm sure we do in here as well because there should not be three acarpies. Oh my goodness, we have way too many, way too many acarpi in here. So I'm going to release all three of these acarpi. Oh, that's only two. I'm going to release the female as well. And now there's back to two acarpi. I think we just needed a bit of like a, 
a bit of cleanup around the zoo because there's a few a few things that have got a bit crazy uh these are all fine we've got some good amount of infants there got loads of penguins but we have got a lot of oh i think the young ones ah the young ones have grown up so we have lots of penguins to release as well okay let's release 25 penguins for 1800 credits back up to uh to 10,000, which is good and um, that's probably good we've got a lot of penguins in there but that's okay and we should probably check out our Nile Lechwe. I think we're still looking for a male now that we've lost our breeding male. Yeah, so, oh, and they're all they're all kind of getting on. So let's actually grab a new uh, Nile Lechwe male. Nile Lechwe. Ooh, that's a good one. Let's grab him and we'll send him to quarantine and then we can move him over. We've also got too many uh, tapers, so we're just going to release them as well. And Mooney is uh, is in with his daughter. So we need actually the other males. There's two males and one female. And Mooney is elderly, bless him. But I think maybe in this case we should send him to hospice care if we can. Um, or maybe he's he's still young enough to be to go to another zoo. So we're going to send him to the trade center. Um, he's not quite that elderly, it seems. And then if this is the new male that we're going to relocate back into the zoo... Um, we've got Mooney. Yeah, we could we could trade him. Let's trade him into a different zoo so he can he can breed in the new zoo, and we can still carry on our breeding program here. I think that's good. Uh, we need to have a look at our water buffalo as well. It's just Bill getting old, I think. Yeah, he's uh, he's infertile now, but um, I'm gonna leave him in here actually to live out his days because we don't have another male. Oh, we've got some animal protesters that have been attracted. Is that because? They can't, they've got themselves up there and now they can't get themselves down. I think that's probably it. Let's just move you down. You should be able to get down though. It's all traversable, so I'm I'm unsure as to why that is. But the animal for this episode is the Bengal tiger, and we are gonna start building their habitat now. So let's say we've got two Bengal tigers and three cubs, or four cubs, maybe. Um, we're gonna need a thousand meters squared. Um, which is much smaller than their actual uh, territory, as we found out. But we're going to make sure we give them way more than that anyway. So we're going to be using grade three, resistance three, wooden logs, um, because it keeps in the eco-friendly theme. And then uh, it's also high enough uh, resistance. And we can just put anti-climb features on the top so they're not climbable. So I'm going to do a bit of a barrier around the outside here, I think. Okay, that's quite a large habitat we've just built here on wooden logs. I'm not sure how high it needed to be. Let's just have a quick look. Um, above three meters. Okay, so we're just going to edit the barrier, select all of the barrier, and then just raise it up to three meters. Let's have it on 3.15. That's good. And uh, we also need to add a habitat gate to make it official. And I'm going to put it on the same side as our facilities right here. I'm just going to add it in there so they've got easy access to, to, the, um, to the habitat. And I'm going to put a staff path here as well so that our guests can't walk over there as well. They know that's just for the keepers. Um, and then I think we should probably just put some glass paneling in. Um, I'm going to use one-way glass and I think I'm going to separate it out. In fact, no, I'm just going to have the whole side be glass so that guests can see from wherever they want on this whole side. Because um, they've only got one side to look at the habitat from. So we're going to go from there, have that all be one-way glass. I can see we've got some issues. We're just going to have to grab these sections at the wrong way round, um, which is these. Go on settings and then switch it to be uh, the other one. So it's either left to right or right to left. I just got lucky there with the, uh, with the right to left. So now they shouldn't be able to see from the from the inside, but they should be able to see from the outside. Uh, and it's just this one that's the wrong way around. So switch that up there like that. There we go. And now the uh, the actual barrier is in place and we can see this habitat is 13,000 meters squared. So it is pretty large. We're almost meeting. Well, we're not really, but we're, we're getting closer to that female territory size. Um, as I said, we're going to have to just 
um, say that for this zoo, they're not going to be there that long. I never like having tigers in zoos, but we do need to breed them at the same time. And we perhaps should have planned out a larger space for them. But then I don't think it just really works with the game because then the guests are just like, oh yeah, we can't see the tigers. And it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> um, but perhaps in the future should do a zoo where we li literally do like the proper uh, territory sizes for all animals that like we want them to have. So it completely mimics their territory in the wild. I think I'm going to be it. So I think next we should get our Bengal tigers. Bengal tiger. And we've got loads. Ooh, we've got a really cool, um, some really cool uh, albino or, or leucistic um, coated ones. That, they might be worth thinking about. And we've also got the classic orange. I think what we might do is the same we did before and get one of each. So maybe we'll get this leucistic female from, yeah, for uh, 3,000. Because she's only four years old. And then get a male from a different zoo with a, with a nice orange coat for only 1,000. Now we've got two. Let's send them to our zoo. What a poet I am. Okay, let's send them to quarantine. Um, they're gonna quarantine in here and then we can add them into the zoo. Um, another thing we need to think about in this episode is transport. So I'm gonna, oh, our mechanic. Our mechanic's already on it. <laughs> I was gonna say, we need to set our mechanic to research all of the transport rides, but they've already done it. Um, so that's perfect. Um, we have so many mechanics now. I think we probably need to take a second just to train up all of our staff and maybe just go through and check whether everyone is actually okay with what they've got to do. So Asia Entrance clearly needs another keeper. And it seems like that's it, really. Um, it's just Asia Entrance that's uh, struggling. So I'm going to grab another keeper and I'm going to whack it just over here, kind of where... Just them, not it. <laughs> I'm gonna whack them just over there where the uh, where the entrance to the Asia side of the zoo is, and then add this person in to Asia entrance. We have so many staff working for us now. It's a massive, uh, massive zoo. Um, got Asia entrance and exhibits for our educators. Let's just add another two in. So we're gonna go educator here and educator over here. Let's hope they're assigned to the right ones, um, and then we're gonna add them in to Asia entrance and exhibits. And hopefully this will just kind of uh, give our give our keepers, our mechanics, just everyone a bit more um, a bit more efficiency in their jobs. I'm going to just get another couple of mechanics as well because we have so much money in this zoo. Um, I think we can we can afford it. I know the mechanic the only mechanics that are struggling at the minute are the ones that are are less trained up. But I just think if we put them on zoo, they'll be absolutely fine. And it may be. I mean. The zoo has spiralled as far as size. Um, I didn't necessarily plan it to even be this big, but of a zoo this side, you could start sorting your mechanics into work zones, and that's probably a more efficient way to manage them. But I just haven't done it in this instance, and it feels too late in the game to start reorganising our mechanics out, because it kind of works. We can just get a couple of extra mechanics, and they cover each other. So that's how we've done it so far, and that's how I'm going to carry on doing it. And then we're going to just need some more... Uh, it looks like entrance guest facilities and Asia entrance um, guest facilities. They're the two. So I'm going to get maybe four more vendors and just, I think Asia entrance guest facilities are over here. Um, and just add four more vendors into the roster and just assign them to the two we just talked about. Okay, so both of our tigers have passed their quarantine. Let's move them into Habitat 63, which is Bengal. Oh, that's not how you spell Bengal. Bengal tigers. So we'll move them on over. Um, I wanted to leave a bit of space here for something we're going to be doing a little bit later. So I've just kind of cut the habitat a little bit short on this side. Um, that was intentional. And I think what I'm going to do as well is turn, like we've got with our Siberian tiger habitat, I think it would be nice to um, to turn this area into a bit of like an underwater viewing area because we do have this dip in the land and tigers, as you've told me in the comments and as we've seen in the previous habitat, like to swim, which is really cool. So I think I'm just going to get on the terrain modification now and uh, and just create a bit of an underwater viewing area just about here.
Okay, I've had to put some rocks because the, the water was not playing ball. Um, but we've managed to put this in. I think I'm going to have to, because I delete the barriers, I'm going to have to reassign the, the tigers to the habitat. Um, oh no, they've already started moving. So hopefully they will get here just fine. Our loafs died. Little lima loaf. Bless them. They've been with us for a while. Oh my goodness, we're about to have baby leopards. Is she going to lie down? There she goes. There she goes. Oh, look at this little face. Oh my goodness. Look how beautiful they are. There's just one. Oh, they only have one one cub. Oh, that's adorable. Oh, bless her. Shira. Good for you. And hopefully our tigers are at least close to... Oh, they're right here. Oh, there's one there. They're about to enter the zoo. Wow. Look at them. So this is our male, I believe. Yeah. Look at them. Look how beautiful their coat is. And the female closely behind. Wow, look at the white coat as well. That is beautiful. Well, we need to check firstly, because their growling reminds me. Uh, we need to check that they can't escape, because that's quite important. And they can. <laughs> uh, so we've got a couple of areas of the rocks that they can jump out on. And then I think just a couple of areas where the fence isn't quite high enough generally. So what I might actually do is just raise the whole fence up to be a little bit higher. Just on the whole habitat. And, uh, and see if that changes anything. Okay, that's pretty much fixed all of the issues. There's just one area that they can get out of. And I imagine that is because they can access this area here. So if we can maybe just uh, build up this rock area slightly, we might be able to put them off. And let's try it again. Okay, just raise barriers up slightly, and uh, I'm just going to connect this one up though, because I do want it to uh, to join. Okay, so it looks like our tigers can't get out now, which is perfect. Now we need to make sure we assign this habitat to our work zone, and it's going to go in Asia end, because it's the end of our Asia zone. It's going to be fed from this staff work zone, and we also need to assign it to the zoo work zone which uh, along with that solar panel um, will mean that the vets and the mechanics can access it, which is perfect. So now these guys should be absolutely fine. It's just that the habitat is completely inappropriate for them. <laughs> so obviously my plan is to add waterfalls to this habitat because I can see the tiering to it and I cannot help myself at this stage. So I think I'm going to have like a three tiered waterfall and we also need to paint the terrain um, so it's actually appropriate for them with the right the right type. Like, this isn't right. Oh my goodness, we just had a baby gorilla. <gasps> Look at them. How adorable are you? So I think we've got... How many gorillas have we got now? We've got three females, our male, and a baby boy. How adorable. Look at their little face. Just walking around. I mean, gorillas, they are the uh, the most uh, mundane of all the animals we have. I thought they were going to be like really like, you know, running around and stuff, but they don't. They're uh, they're very chill. They they don't move if they don't need to. But fair enough. I guess that's kind of I can respect that. Like, <laughs> so do I. So, <laughs> OK, um, it's it's about to uh, to be nighttime. You can see the sun setting on our zoo. So I think I'm going to wait for the daytime and then um, I will start painting the terrain of our tigers. There we go, it's just turned daytime. Look at our tiger, it's so cute. Okay, um, we need to paint the terrain so it's the right type for them. And look at the other one having a swim. 
Um, they are enjoying it nonetheless. But, oh no, <gasps> sunflowers died. Oh, bless. Oh, that is an unfortunate position to die in, sunflower. Oh, well, you will be missed. You will be missed. Um, your memorial is on its way. We will build the memorial at some stage. But for now, we need to make sure that we paint the terrain and I'm gonna build a little waterfall feature because you know me, look at this, look at this land. It's, it's tiered, I can't help myself. If there's a tier to the land, waterfalls need to go in. <laughs> so I'm gonna do that now. Okay, I think that's a pretty cool waterfall feature. So I'm fairly happy with that, I have to say. And uh, I'm hoping our tigers are as well. They are happy with their habitat. They just need some hard shelter, unsurprisingly. Um, I'm wondering whether they need climbing enrichment. I don't think they do. No, they don't need any. Um, it might be cool. I'm not sure if they can walk over this area. Uh, oh, they can. They can jump across it. Maybe, maybe we should leave it, actually, as it is. Um, for them to be able to, to get across. Um, oh, we've just lost one of our dolls. Wine gum. Oh, wine gum. That was a very dramatic way to go. Bless you. Well, rest in peace, wine gum. Oh, one of the tigers is about to try out the water. They're thinking about the waterfall. Are you going to go in? Are you going to go in? Yes. Having the best time. Look at their little paws under the wall. Oh, kind of in the land. There we go. Look at them swimming. That's pretty if ever I saw it. And these tigers are also missing some bedding and some enrichment. Now, if we have a look at the enri enrichment available to us, we've got some underwater fish feeder, which we definitely want to put in. Um, I'm going to suggest we put that right at the bottom of our... Uh, underwater area there so they can be fed from that then we've also got a frozen blood pumpkin and I'm going to whack this kind of near where the guests are going to see them um, I don't want to create too much of an ugly terrain piece though um, and then I'm going to put a gift box further in the back got a fire hose ball I'll whack up there some frozen fruit now as a frozen fish even. I'm gonna put this over here. So this is kind of the feeding area, general area. And we'll maybe have our education over here as well about the animals. And then if we put a rubbing pad in 
um, over there and a tamarind scratching post because we are going to have tamarinds in here. So I'll put a couple of these in. Now we're also going to need some uh, shelter. And I think for these guys, I'm just going to build a, a shelter into the train we already have. We've already got this kind of slope here. So I think I'm going to use some climbable platforms and just build a bit of a wooden shelter into the side of the rock face. Okay, I think that's quite a cool shelter back here that they can use. Oh, I forgot the uh, the submarine boy as well. I'm going to whack this in um, on the deep one at the front as well. I think we'll just whack this right down. Uh, maybe on that side over here. And then we also have sprinklers, which we need to put somewhere. So perhaps the sprinklers should go up here near the top pond. If we have like a, a trio of three sprinklers and then maybe smooth the terrain out so it doesn't look quite so weird. Um, we're going to need to paint that in short grass as well. I think we're going to need to go over all of our painting just at the end now uh, to make sure that it all works for them. Because um, I'm not sure. Oh, they are quite happy with this, but I do just want to touch it up so it looks a bit more, a bit more natural, I guess. There we go. And then the final thing these guys need is some trees. Now we're going to go with tropical. They don't like the Wimba tree. Where is that? Is that pulling over from, yeah, from our area? That's fine. That's just our staff area. That can go wherever. So I'm just going to move that further in and uh, adjust the other trees. Okay. Now, hopefully that's not in the way. And yes, they're happy with all of these. So let's get some more tropical trees. Um, for, uh, I think we'll go generally tropical. Oh, no, from Asia. Tropical trees from Asia. Attenborough's pitcher, pitcher plant. Wait, pitcher plant pitcher? Is that right? <laughs> um, oh wow, these are weird. But if it's Attenborough's, then we've got to put it in, haven't we? Um, I don't know where these go. These must be, they're not aquatic, they're just tropicals. So they must just go wherever. So yes, we will have a look at some of these and add in some trees now. Okay, we've reached 52% coverage, and I think that's pretty good because we want them to have a reasonable amount of space still. And they've still got 11,000 meters of space, so that's pretty good, and I'm quite happy with it. Um, you can see the light coming through the trees. I love it. Um, the lighting in this game is so nice. And we've got these weird lipstick... Uh, these lipstick... Uh, can't remember what they're called, Lip lipstick palms or something? And I'm not sure how the uh, Attenborough pitcher plants are supposed to be, but I will let you guys tell me if I've done these wrong. I think, I'm assuming they come out of, like the, the actual pictures come out of the uh, the other plant and you can customize them, uh, which is cool if it is the case that you can customize the plants like that. 
lets you have quite a lot of detail. And obviously we've got our tamarinds in there, some of which are scratching posts and other ones are just general tamarinds. Um, but I was quite happy with how this turned out and like the triple water effect, I think, a uh, waterfall effect, I think is really nice. Look at our little tiger playing in the water as well. They're so cute. Need to find our leucistic tiger as well. Um, where are they? Ah, now. This tiger, as they are white, I will name Salt because it was a suggestion made ages ago in the comments and I keep forgetting to name one of the white animals Salt. So there you are. Oh, and they're up a tree. There you go. See, they've got enrichment all over the shop. Look at them in the tree. How cool is that? God, that'd be terrifying. I would not be... Oh no, Miss Marple died. I would not want to be the one feeding these tigers. <laughs> Never know where they are. Oh, poor Miss Marple. Oh, they're so weird, aren't they? Proboscis monkeys. And another wild dog. Oh, in the water. Okay, well, this is getting a bit sad. So I'm going to, uh, to move away from the death and go back to our beautiful tiger habitat. Um, we do need to add benches, bins, and education boards. Okay, so we just added an education talk, some habitat boards, the bins, the benches, and I've set this to be May because the other habitat talk for the uh, Amma leopards is in March, and this is on the same work zone. So we also need to make sure we actually have an educator for this section. I'm not sure we, oh, we do, Asia End, there they are. Let's actually, let's train everyone up again um, to get them to their next level. And I think what we're gonna do in the next episode is we're gonna put some proper transport links across the zoo and I'm thinking I might use the uh, the monorail, no it's not a monorail, what's it called? Gondola. Um, because I'm not sure, obviously there's no way to make kind of eco-friendly transport in this game but I'm assuming once you know once we built this it's gonna run on electricity which is better than like if we're saying this is actually like a jeep that would be on fuel wouldn't it it's a bit you have to kind of uh you gotta stay with me for this one we could use a monorail actually we could do a monorail or we could do a gondola i think a gondola is quite cool though because then you can kind of like float above the uh the whole place and as long as you know as long as you don't have it be too far but it lets people get get on and get off where they need to go. Uh, I'll probably make it free as well. Um, I think I'll do that in the next episode because we've done quite a lot this episode. If you've enjoyed this episode, please give it a like. It really helps the channel out and I'll see you in the next one.